Do you think, as I think, we are set for a consecutive record transfer window? I mean, when you think of it, Simon, so many things come into the equation. McAllister, Brighton. Caicedo, Brighton. Maybe both will be out of there. Bellingham going to head to Real Madrid, or is he? Declan yeah. Rice, Harry Kane in the mix. I mean, where will the spending trajectory end this time around? It's going to go through the roof, is it not? Um... Well, Bellingham won't be a transfer that happens in our transfer market, will it? So we won't be looking at that in, in the Premier League window of saying the 1.9 billion, 1.9 billion that was spent yep. in the August window, yep. coupled with the 750 million or whatever it was spent in the January one, 2.6 billion. That averages out 130 million pound per club. Right? Um, the Premier League clubs bring in about five billion a year. Average Premier League club gets about 250 million because Man City get 500 million and say Bournemouth get 150 million. So we're talking about ridiculous levels of spend. If we can see Luton coming up and a few teams coming up, do we think they're going to spend big? So whatever spent at the top mm. might be spent less at the bottom. True. So we get ourselves into True. a position. Yeah. I'd be very surprised, despite the ridiculous observations of Ten Hag about Man United's not spending enough money and because a few people in the January transfer window, namely specifically Chelsea, went and spent 200-odd million quid in the January transfer window, that somehow Man United didn't spend enough money um, and haven't spent enough money. I think it's just a calling card to make sure they spend a decent amount of money next season. I think that's probably what it really is rather mm. than a criticism of what they spent the previous year. Um, but I'm, I'd, I'd, be, I'd be surprised, Jim. I'd be surprised. I think there's, there's Chelsea aren't going to spend 400 million quid again. So that will then that will well, come. That, I'm I'm surprised that you're surprised. And Newcastle will spend big. Arsenal are bound to spend big. Liverpool are going to I'm spend not, big. I'm not sure they. First and foremost, I think that you're. Villa are in Europe. Yeah, I agree with you. But if you if you if you think each one of those clubs is going to spend, um, I think I think Luton will spend 30, 40 million. You're quid. the one that said Arsenal need to spend two hundred million. Agreed. But I don't believe that necessarily that we're going to see. The, the, the level of spend go beyond 1.9 billion. I hope I'm right anyway, because if you look at that and say, where's that going to be spent? You're going to, Chelsea are not going to spend 400 million. Other people may not spend the same amount of money. And you might see other clubs um, trading in a certain way. But I still think we're going to see significant levels of spend. So you think, you think no is the answer to the question. You don't think it will eclipse the 2023 January Premier League spend of 780 million. Well, 780 million. Well, January's, January's a different conversation. August is the conversation we're having, right? So the August conversation is about 1.9 billion. That's the, that's the imminent one. I can't tell you what's going to happen in January because I can't tell you who's going to be in the stuck in January that feels the need to buy their way out of it, mm. right? But the bottom line is, is the big bulk of the spend is in August and we're looking at saying who's going to spend that kind of money that requires football clubs, or sorry, gets us to two billion. We're looking for the purpose of this conversation to break the two billion barrier. I'm not, but I can see the the, the, the historic nature of what that would mean in people's minds. So that means every football club's got to spend a hundred million quid. Chelsea, even with their absolute profligacy last year, that propped up a proportion, almost 25 percent of the spend in the transfer window, they're not going to go again that way. So all of those, but your argument will be, and it's probably a sensible argument, that Newcastle are going to spend, I don't think they will, I think Newcastle might spend 150, 200 million again. Um, well, well, that's a that's fine. A, a, an extremely significant fine. spend. So, uh, agreed, agreed, but we're not. We're talking about an aggregate spend of 20 so, clubs. So if Villa spend 100 plus, which I think they might do, yeah. if Arsenal spend 150 yeah. plus... And if Luton spend 30 or 40, and if Bournemouth spend 50, and if other clubs spend... Tottenham have got to spend. If, if Palace spend 30... And all these clubs, and so then all of a sudden you've got this mean, which might be less than a hundred million pound per club. You might have one club at three hundred million quid, mm. another club at fifty, another club at fifty. All of a sudden you've got four hundred million between three clubs is one hundred and thirty million, and and so you're moving towards a. T I think they'll be under two billion this year. I hope they are, but well, I the don't care. Either summer which way. record was twenty seventeen one point four five billion. Yeah, and they've smashed it this year. But but four hundred million of that went to Chelsea, and Chelsea last summer was one point nine. Yeah, yeah. So Chelsea probably spent two hundred million pounds more in that transfer window than they did on previous ones. Mm. So you look at it and say that a football one football club um, was almost twenty five percent of the spend. Look, it can go either way. I think it's a statistic that we don't necessarily want, but for the purpose of how we draw attention on football, this race to the bottom of how much money can be spent as if it's some badge of honour. Um, then the, I, I, I don't think it will, but I wouldn't be surprised if it did. Well, you mentioned Manchester United, you mentioned Eric Ten Hag. He's been yeah. speaking about this. He's done an interview in The Times on this uh, very subject and he says, yep, we need to invest. The club knows if you want to play top four, if you want to compete for trophies in this tough league, uh, then you have to invest. Uh, otherwise, um, you don't have a chance uh, because 
other clubs will do. Uh, we have seen it in the winter that all the clubs around us make huge investments. We didn't, and still we made it. Um, so I'm really happy uh, and proud of my team. We are uh, in the right direction, but we are not there where we have to have to be. Uh, and there's still a long way to go. And but I also see uh, that there's a potential potential in this team and in individual players. And I think. Uh, we showed during the uh, season that we uh, made progress. So that's a compliment to the players, but also to the to the coaches. Hey, we work really hard. But yeah, uh, you have to make that investment. Uh, have a good strategy. Work hard, and you get rewarded for it. Mm-hmm. Now, I mean, I think he's right about that. What he's saying is uh, surely is right, Simon. Uh, he then goes on to say in the Times when you see investment in the Premier League in the summer window, yeah. We, 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 we did spend and we spent well. The club spent $208 uh, million on Anthony, Casemiro, Martinez, uh, Malasia. Then in the winter window, we didn't do a thing. Yeah. Didn't do a thing. Yeah. Lone players, Vigor, Sabitza, Butlin. Yeah. And he said, if you want to be competitive in this league, you have to invest. I need signings. Yeah. I need yeah. signings. What he's, what he's advocating for is the wonderful tra- January transfer window that on the whole has been the bastion of bad business to have the same amount of money spent in it in January as he did in December. How about you coach the players like Anthony to produce at a certain level so you don't need to acquire players in the January window to fill the gap of the lack of performance that those players are putting in? How about that being part of your equation? Of course he's right to suggest that you've got to go pound for pound. But the reasons why the market might su- be suppressed a little bit is because in comes the legislation sooner rather than later about the diminishing ability to be able to spend certain amounts of money. You've got 90% of turnover, which is relatable to transfers, wages and depreciation on player contracts being pulp, being part of the administrative thinking of football clubs to be soon replaced by 70% in a couple of years' time. So that's why I think the transfer market may be driven down a little bit because people are going to start thinking about the consequences of the depreciation that transfer fees will bring to their balance sheet when they buy players for top money. Going to 10 hard... They'll find loopholes, incidentally, just as Chelsea well, did with long contracts. Well... No, because that's been that's been legislated out, and they'll find loopholes. No, yeah, it hasn't. Well, it, it has. They've changed the rules. They changed it so you can't buy a player and sign him for longer than five years, which, I, by the way, I think is preposterous. Because all of a sudden, a group of people suddenly decided they didn't like the way Chelsea did business. How about mind your own bleeding business? These are the rules at the time, and you didn't have a problem with it until someone else decided to commit their own financial future to long-term contracts. I've never heard anything so ridiculous. Either way, but Ten Hag's observation is. That they didn't spend. Okay, Ten Hag. Well, what we should have done, right? We should have spent 100, okay, 170 Hag. million, 170 million in January, and then another 50 in, in sorry, 170 million in August, and 50 million in January. Would that have suited you better? No, you decided to. Sh- you know, I was going to use a terrible expression. Now I'll change my mind. You decided to fire your bolt early. <laughs> you can work out what I was yes. going to say. Yes, uh, and you were <laughs> the direction um, you were going in. Yeah, uh, and, I was and ducking. Spe- Did and spend 220 million quiz in a, in the August window. And what have you? And what have you done with that? The key, one of the huge part of it was Anthony. I know, but you get this thing about Anthony. You said Arsenal. Would need to, you said Arsenal. He's not crap. He's you said Arsenal would need to crap. spend two hundred million just to be top four. Correct. Correct. Two hundred million pounds. What, what, what my advocate? So ten hags about. What, he's absolutely he spot on about what Manchester United need to do. But he spent two hundred and twenty. He says there's an imbalance. No, what he said was it's two hundred and twenty million pounds spent. Thank you. I'll have that. Thank you. That's gone right. But what have you done for me lately? Well, I gave you two hundred and twenty. But what have you done for me lately? Because none of the reasons why I'm unsuccessful in January is down to me. I have not made Anthony better, and he's not delivered outcomes. But I got you to pay ninety million quid for him. But that doesn't count in this conversation. So what I'm saying but is, how are they going to bridge fourteen if, points if, to Manchester if I, City? If I say, Listen, Ten Hag's done all right. He's done all right. Spend a bean in the last window. He's gone to the FA Cup final, are, we, and he's got one other trophy we, we, in the bag because he spent two hundred and twenty million in August. Right? I'm advocating for Arsenal to spend two hundred million pound next season which is £20 million less than Man United are complaining about that they spent. Yeah, but look at it. Look at Arsenal spend in January, the same Trossard. Yes. Now, and what was their overall spend? But at the end of the day, Ten Hag has got a point, I Simon. I see you. There's an look. FA Cup final beckoning and they yes. didn't do anything for him in the, the, in the last window. I accept 200 plus the window before that. Yes. But he's saying, unless you invest to go to the next level, and he's talking about and the next level. And they should spend... I'm not, I'm not suggesting... You're not but, putting up a case for the I'm Glazers not suggesting, saying they no, sort no, up I'm the not, pockets in the last up, window. I'm not putting up a case for anybody. I'm advancing the argument that if the overall spend of Manchester United was pound for pound with other clubs around them, 
then then ultimately it comes down to the coaches in the dugout, doesn't it? Because they got to do their jobs. So I'm not suggesting he's I mean, doing his job. I'm, I'm, I've sat here and said. People that are sitting there thinking that the Glazers won't spend if they're still owners for the next transfer window are a bit simple because they've got a going concern and they still need to make sure this football club advances, irrespective of... They take 200 million quid out of the bank and they put it into a player, they've still got 200 million pounds because the player becomes worth the money that they exchanged for him. So it's all about cash flow and it's all about... Look at look at Man United's transfer situation. They owe 320 million pounds on transfers from two years ago. Don't tell me about the dynamics and economics of football because whilst I may have lost a lot of money in it, I also learned a lot of lessons from it. So this point is about United. I'm agreeing that Ten Hag should be able to spend £200 million next year. I'm not suggesting he shouldn't. Mm. But don't come on here and tell me that £220 million that you spent in, in August was not good enough because you needed some more players in January because you didn't do a good enough, good enough job with the players that you recruited. Yeah, but it wasn't good enough. Because of the gap, you can see it. Finished 14 points behind City. Because you're building. Nine behind Arsenal. Because you're building, because you're five years ah. behind Man City. Because, tell you what you did, you allowed Village Idiots. That's like, what he's saying at the you, moment. You allowed Village Idiots like Ole Gunnar Solskjaer to run the football club for Ten three years. Ten didn't. And Ten Hag is building and pushing the envelope, but you've got to call it for what it is. You and can't... that's why you should be saying, yeah, Ten Hag, you've got it right. No, what I'm saying is, you've got it right to demand expenditure. You've got it right to push the envelope. You haven't got it right to categorise the situation by suggesting that you've been underinvested in. You spent £220 million to buy players in the August window. Mm. Maybe you should have got more from those players to not needed different players in January. Because atypically, how many times do Man United in the past, when they've been successful, gone into the transfer market in January and bought players to supplement their playing? It wasn't the Alex Ferguson who was the leading voice behind transfer windows in the first place. Mm. There's a good message, actually. Wow. Simon, he's really got it in with Ten Hag, hasn't he? No, he's I haven't. A, he's a massive <laughs> issue with him, Ten Hag. Oh, starting with the suit. The old fitting <laughs> he did suit. It. He yeah, like, it. Burberry suits they are. They're very nice, by the way. Really? Mm, very okay. Nice. <laughs> 20 past 12. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.